Thank you for staying with us on Y254 Updates. And tonight, if you're just joining us, we're talking about justice for children. And there's been a campaign that has been going uh, on on social media that is hashtag justice for every uh, child. We have Wendy Aura. I just hosted uh, Wendy on Monday about uh, Youth Week. And she's here today because she's a leader in this campaign. She's a director of Young Women Leaders Connect and she's also a youth leader to help us understand what is a campaign all about. Be part of this conversation by sharing your views and comments on our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Moriyoki. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, and because we time is not really on our side, I would like us to look at very four important things or four key things on these. The reason as to, and let us start with, give us a brief, a very brief uh, introduction or uh, something very brief on what this campaign is all about. That is hashtag justice for every child KE. Okay, thank you Patricia for hosting me. Uh, about the campaign, it's, it, we have a hashtag justice for every child mm -hmm. on social media and we have justice for every child Kenya. Mm -hmm. So for the one for Kenya is part of a global campaign that is inspired by the Global Justice for Every Child campaign. Mm -hmm. And you find that it, it's underway in more than 60 countries worldwide. Mm -hmm. So as Kenya, we felt that we have more tangible issues that need to be felt, mm -hmm. that need to be addressed as young people. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we came together as youth-focused organizations, and we want to add our voices to this to be able to to champion, to advocate for the rights of marginalized uh, children. Mm -hmm. So you find that one in every five children, they live under a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. and they live on one or less than a dollar. Mm -hmm. So we find that, uh, especially during the pandemic, it has, the effects have hit hard on the marginalized groups. Mm -hmm. So we find that as young people, we need to come together and be able to advocate for, for uh, enough allocation of resources to the marginalized group. Okay. Uh, when we talk about challenges that are faced by children, we know there are quite a lot of them. There's quite a number. But yeah. let us talk about probably, uh, mention or talk to us tonight about probably three. What are some of the major challenges that you're addressing, that you seek to address with this campaign? So the campaign focuses on four issues. The first one is accountability of resources that have been allocated for COVID mm -hmm. response. And also we have education, we have sexual gender-based violence and police brutality. Mm -hmm. You find that these issues, they have come out strongly, especially during the pandemic. So for example, on accountability, we've had uh, donors trickling money into the, into the country. Mm -hmm. We have the World Bank, we just donated uh, 1.6 billion uh, for the COVID response. They've also added the 260 billion for fiscal uh, to just boost the fiscal economy. So we find that all this money, uh, even the one from uh, the World Bank, the Africa Development Bank, we need, as a Kenyan and as a young person, we mm -hmm. need to know how the money is being used. If we had the simulation packages, the uh, social simulative packages, we need to know how far are they with them and is the money being utilized to the latter because mm -hmm. we've had issues of corruption before in this country but COVID-19 is a very serious issue and we can't we can't imagine uh, maybe any leader taking it lightly by maybe uh, the money being used the wrong way okay. so we've come together to to be able to address the issue of accountability we need to have accessible information on how the money is being used and how they intend to use them. Mm -hmm. So the other one is about education. We've seen uh, right now in Kenya, the schools have been closed to yeah. January. You can imagine how, what, how the academic year has been affected. You can imagine how, what the children and young people are going through during the pandemic. So also you've also seen we've em we are starting to embrace the, uh, the learning, online learning. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, not everyone in Kenya is able to afford the online learning. Mm -hmm. So it has just expanded the, uh, it has expanded the digital, uh, the digital ability to access the, the resources. Mm -hmm. So what we need from the government is to be able to, to address the issue of digital divide, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, all children are important, okay. all young people are important, and the education matters. So when we, we need to find a way of how we're going to make the resources and opportunities accessible to all children. And on the same note, the an issue that came up strongly was teen pregnancy yeah. because it's something that has risen so much during the uh, since March. So we find that 
it's going to affect many girls who will be going back to school. So we need, as young people, we've come together and we want to recommend, to be able to, to say that, what, what, how are you going to handle the situation? Because when we work, uh, when we open in January, how many girls are going back to school? Mm -hmm. How many girls are going back pregnant? Okay. You see? So when we come back together and want to address these issues, we're able to talk about them, give way forward, and be able to, uh, to be able to refine the policies that exist already. Okay. And uh, just, let me just mention the others. We have sexual gender-based violence, mm -hmm. which has also increased tremendously during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want the government to be able to, uh, to put up uh, safety houses and those that are well managed and those that okay. are run by the government okay. because this is one issue that we need to talk about and the other one is pol police brutality mm -hmm. you've seen uh when they were when they were enforcing the law of uh, curfew you know kenya is not used to curfew yeah. as before so when they are trying to enforce it when you talk about police brutality, the major targets and the major victims have been young people okay yeah uh you've talked about all those and as we talk about uh, waiting, probably like when you talk about teenage pregnancy and we talk about coming January, how many girls are we going to have back in our schools? Uh, or when you talk about uh, students being at home right now because all these two things have affected uh, children or uh, teenagers, that is people below the age of 18, who yeah. are still minors at, under the care of their parents. Yeah. What is the campaign doing actively as you seek to make sure that there are long-term solutions. What are you doing now as we go through the pandemic? What are some of the strategies that you've put up to help such people, to make sure that no more teenage pregnancies, even if it means that we don't get to open schools in January, or as if the students don't have to go back, what are you doing as of now without talking about two, two months or three months down the line? Okay, we have a, a call for action. Uh, our strategy is the first, the main one has been online, mm -hmm. which we've done for now. This is the fourth week. Mm -hmm. So every week we've had an online campaign, which we do. We, we've had webinars, we've had Twitter chats, mm -hmm. we had Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we just need the society to know about what you're really doing and to bring more people on board. Mm -hmm. So, and when we are done with the fourth week, the fourth week is talking about police brutality right now. Mm -hmm. So when we'll be done with it, we'll be able to write a joint statement mm -hmm. which has the key demands by the young people. Mm -hmm. And when we're doing this, we are targeting the police, policy, make, uh, policy people the decision making people mm -hmm. and we want to we want them to be accountable for and to be able to commit to the recommendations they are making as young people oh. so you'll be seeing as uh, especially from next week you'll mm -hmm. be seeing as trying to call out the decision making people to be able to to address these issues to the core okay yeah uh before we wind up we would not do justice to these uh topic without having to ask what do you expect as people leading this campaign what do you expect from different uh, institutions let's talk of government let's talk of the church the society what roles do you think that each institution that, uh, among the three that I have mentioned, what can they bring on the table? Because you can, I, I believe you cannot do this all by yourself. You need the support yeah. of these three uh, main stakeholders. What do you think? Yeah, as I've said uh, in our statement, we are going to make it very clear that we have roles that the government needs to take up seriously. Mm -hmm. it's a, we, in fact, the reason we are doing this is because these are issues that have been there. But now they've increased because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and we are coming to amplify the voice mm -hmm. of young people so that it reach the government, it reach the church, it reach the society. Because uh, you find that when you talk, for example, about uh, getting justice for the teen mothers, who maybe the culprits are old people, old men. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about justice, the government has all the tools and resources to be able to facilitate uh, easy and uh, a time-bound justice. So when, uh, we, what we want to do is to be able to uh, to give the government recommendations of what they need to do. And if there are po policies that are, exist, especially maybe on uh, police br brutality, we need the government to come in and make, implement them mm -hmm. and make them more serious. And this commitment is going to be serious because they'll be accountable for what they commit to. Okay. So we'll have a follow-up and we'll be able to answer to the society and the young people we represent. Okay. Yes. Uh, this, uh, your last uh, remarks as we 
wind up on this topic, I would like you to talk about uh, education. Uh, mm -hmm. Education is one of the things that, you're, that you seek to address. Yeah. Uh, we know that uh, there's free primary education, but we still have issues of children who cannot uh, assess education. Yeah. And we cannot now put this on the government because they have offered us free primary education. Yeah. And some, we also have, I think, secondary school, there is an uh, amount of money that is paid by the government, which has made it easy for parents. Yeah. So what is your opinion on children who are at home who still cannot assess education? What is your message to a mother, to a father watching us tonight, and they have not taken the obligation to make sure that their children get education? Now, education is, is a right in the first place. <laughs> we need to know that it's a right, and every parent who is not going to allow the kid to go to school is supposed to be in jail mm -hmm. as we speak mm -hmm. you know so uh, as a young person and i know the value and the worth of education to any young person so i just want to maybe encourage any young any parent any young person who is out there that we need to take education seriously and being a serious issue and something that uh, that that is the future of this society that's why we are calling upon the seriousness and activeness mm -hmm. of the government or all stakeholders that is involved okay and about the digital divide is something that it's a big issue because right now we are going to we have to embrace the digital era mm -hmm. right now education is going online so what we need the government to do is be able to provide the facilities mm -hmm. if they're talking about the laptops mm -hmm. how far have they gone with the laptops okay. how much was allocated for the laptops mm -hmm. how are we going to talk about the network mm -hmm. in the remote areas mm -hmm. because at the end of the day a child who is able to afford and the child who is very poor mm -hmm. all of them need education okay and, and the same platform all of them need to access their resources so we are talking about being able to provide a solution that is going to to able to bring all of them Oh. together and uh, on the same platform. Okay. Yes. Uh, two seconds. Yeah. If I want to be part of this campaign, social media pages? Okay, we normally have different organizations uh, we, when we're doing the online. Mm -hmm. For example, this week we have a Twitter chat that will be, uh, what, that will be led by Tribeless Youth. Okay. So if you want to join the campaign, uh, you feel free, to, you can do that. Mm -hmm. We have a consortium of partners. Okay. Uh, talk to any youth organization and mm -hmm. they'll be able to show you how you can join it. But okay. meanwhile, when the, the graphics, the posters are out, and uh, when we'll be talking about when, how to join and when, you shall be share sure that. to join and share. Okay, okay thank yes. you, Wendy, for finding the time to be with us tonight. And if you've watched us, you know that every child really needs uh, to be in an environment where everything is favorable for them. So make sure that you follow up on uh, pages that Wendy has given. Be part of this. Let us make sure that our children have access to everything that is of right to them. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Patricia Morioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.